So we are going to talk nerdy to you about Echo. It's gonna be a deep dive. We're gonna tell you if Echo sucks or soars. With your host, Pablo Gunner and the ambassador. So deep dive Echo. Let's let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Echo happened. Uh, it's the first one to be on uh, Marvel Spotlight. Was it Marvel Spotlight? Yeah, yeah. That's their new what they're calling their shows now. Oh, okay. The production company behind it. It was the first time they put it all out at once too. Yeah. It was five episodes. And the first one's actually pretty long. I think it's almost an hour, maybe like 51 minutes. And then they progressively get less, which I feel like some would have benefited from a little bit more. And it's weird because I feel like the earlier episodes actually felt like they needed a little more, but those were the longest ones. Yeah, I, the pacing was pretty off in this. The hardest part of having like a character like act, they're they're not very likable naturally. So you need to you need to work on giving them some traits that are redeemable. Because like Tony Stark was an arrogant asshole. But he also seemed like a nice person and seemed like he was trying to be better towards the end. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and, and for those of you that don't know, it is Echo is Maya Lopez. She's played by Alaco Cox, which originally the character is not an amputee, but the actress is, right? Alaco Cox is an amputee. Uh, I don't remember I want which leg. I want to say it's her left leg from, from the knee down, but, but they incorporated that into the show. She is deaf and she is also Native American or indigenous, whichever you prefer. And that's a heavy, that's such a heavy influence from the get go. They tell the story of the first Choctaw, which I wasn't aware of. And to me, it was pretty confusing that they, the way they went about it. It wasn't until later on that it made more sense and this whole thing made more sense as well as like her whole name. I feel like that could have been done better. And I, I don't know, I just feel like because of the way that it improved as it went on, I feel like maybe they should have gone back to the beginning and been like, how can we improve this and make it better while also maybe making it shorter, but getting to the point quicker and, and explaining it better. Now, obviously that, that for us, that first episode is almost entirely recap, yeah. right? Or or backstory. Which Recap pretty... or random scenes, you really just, no explanation, just expect you to remember it later when it does come into bold. Please, Cora, look at Milo. He's able to meditate peacefully. Actually, I think he's asleep. What? Well, at least he has the relaxing part down. Right, yeah, and you get your you get your daredevil appearance. Uh, we kind of I, I kind of wish there would have been more, but it makes sense why there wasn't more. I like where he was. It was like it didn't really need to be in there, but I I obviously enjoyed it. To me, that showed the level and quality of the fight choreography from the get go. Right, like that whole fight scene that she had with those guys and with Daredevil, so top notch. I, I would say it, it even rivals the stuff they did in the Netflix show because they didn't really he didn't use his weapons that much I feel like and in this they had him use it quite a bit and I was like oh I love that I love that stuff I love it in the comics and I, I loved it when they did it in the show and it was just it was so well done that fight and then but it's kind of like a quick thing and then we move on to to the rest of it and usually the first episode is all the exposition and setup and instead because it was a recap episode and backstory kind of slowed it down so that the second one was all exposition and, and build and set up. It, it was weird because we. it was weird to have that because most shows are not like that or most things, right? Like when you have your second part, that's when you start like, okay, we're, that's when you start getting into it and instead of laying down the foundations or whatever, what this actual show is going to be about. I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing necessary to have a recap episode because there's those of us that do watch the shows, right? Like we're diehards and we watch everything that Marvel does and we read the comics and stuff. So we know this stuff 
messed up well enough that we don't need a recap, right? Like I, I, I liked the backstory, but I didn't feel like I needed the recap because I remember yeah. the recap. Or what I think would be better is Netflix is really good about doing this when they have their shows. Every time there's a new season, they have like a season recap that gets you everything you need to know and caught up. Like if they would have had that at the beginning and have it optional to skip, I think that would have been a better approach so you could really focus on the character and uh, try to figure out more of what to do, try to get it flow better. Right, absolutely. Yeah, because for sure. They they ran into a lot of issues that bound to happen with the way they were planning on filming it. Mm -hmm. Like the whole signing and talking kind of works, but doesn't at the same time because then you're having to have these people who are trying to deliver a line, slow it down, and then it kind of cheapens the delivery because they're having to do the signs while talking. Uh, the one thing that drove me crazy the most was Kingpin little contact thing. <laughs> I like the idea. They did it too long. All they need to do was show it was signing and then just drop it. Don't keep showing the little simulator there. Right. We have the idea. Now it's just distracting from the story you're trying to tell. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that it, it was awkward and weird. I will say, like, I personally liked, I, I don't know if it was their uncle or what, but that the guy that he would talk and sign at the same time, I really liked his delivery. I thought he was really good. But when it was the grandma, and, and, and that's when they did that, it was it was so slow and so quiet. It was like a silent. I literally, I've, I've watched this show, a lot of these episodes twice because of my reviews. It was just so slow, dude. I fell asleep both times. I fell asleep both times when it was the grandma. <laughs> Because she wouldn't talk, right? Like she would mouth or she'd be such a low whisper that she wasn't like you'd barely hear it. I literally fell asleep both times that I watched it. And yeah, it does give more power because when you when it switches to the parts where there is audio or where she does talk, yeah, it's more powerful. But if I'm asleep and then I'm awake because it's loud and yeah. it's intense and it's like, oh my gosh. And then I, after, I had to rewind it multiple times. I will say that's one point where it didn't work, right? Like once again, it didn't work there. Some of the action I felt like was really top notch right like you have the daredevil stuff and that whole that whole fight scene super top notch kingpin when he does his stuff it feels like it's straight out of the netflix show and it's just so it's so powerful but then there's like the ice rink there's certain parts where i was like this looks great this looks kind of lazy this looks okay and it was crazy how like the quality was all over the place and and that also makes sense because i think she was pregnant for some of the filming of this so they couldn't be that aggressive with her right like or yeah. she would like like you just see your fist hit somebody's head against something. Ah! Even trash cans have no effect. Oh, brother. You know, it might not even been her because I know she did have a stunt person as well. What can I say? I'm nothing without my stunt team. did show her and it was doing it that was the best stuff right that was the those were the best things and yeah they can play with it with like lighting like when it's darker you can do those things and it works pretty well i will say too there's so many things in this where it's powerful man like they did some powerful things like when they did that western part dude that was so cool i don't think i've seen anything like that maybe ever or really in a, in a really long time where they did that western style story and it made sense with this too because of the theme the tone of of this show right so it, it really worked it really worked well to it and then when it came together when it came all together it really worked like the whole echoes right because she's called echo the echo just seemed like insensitive or just kind of like oh the echo thing it's that's that was her that was how it was her powers was based and this it made more sense because it was the echoes of her ancestors right and then even when she used her powers which that was cool that each episode was like her learning a different ability from each ancestor or at least least not learning it but at least becoming familiar with it right yeah. so that by the end she was familiar enough that it made sense when she used it and she created those echoes that are people that are in her bloodline and they were able to tap into that too that was so cool i really loved that it was fantastic and just seeing seeing the culture littered throughout i didn't feel like it was too heavy on any part i know there's people out there that will say like oh kingpin was 
was toned down. He was watered down. He was weak. And I'm like, did you see it? He destroyed that dude. And like I said, that was, that felt like a Netflix moment. And even going further, like you never really saw him put hands on her. I was afraid to when he was, cause I was like, he will destroy her if he does that. Cause this dude is like next level. Like they've amped his power up from the Netflix series, right? Like he just seemed like he was a man before he almost seems, I won't say he's God level, but he seems on that same level as like Daredevil, Spider-Man, right? Of power level. Yeah, he somehow survived that shot, which makes absolutely no sense. He just gotta go with it. Right, and I think that's because they're saying, hey, this is superhero. It's kind of like the Fast X series where it just got more and more ridiculous and people were just like, fine, whatever, right? Like they're establishing a line, like this guy's slightly different, he's powered up and stuff like that. Even what they did with his character, they did it in the comics. And to me, it didn't really make sense why he just all of a sudden had a change of heart in the comics and was like, I'm gonna be a politician. The point is, is that like, it didn't really make sense in the comics. It made more sense in this because she gave him the change of heart, right? Like she healed him, she helped him. And that was such a powerful moment too, to be like how she still considered him her uncle. He, She was able to recognize that he still cared. Even it was, it was like misdirected, misguided and stuff. She was like, you're still my uncle. I'm still gonna try to help you and heal you. And that made it so good to have him be like, and that's where he's going next because that's what they do in the comics. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to see that. What do you think you give it overall rating? Uh, overall, uh, so with our grade scale, our grade scale is like pass. And then it's like, uh, it used to be rent, right? But now it's probably like, you know, skim or something like that, oh, you know, weak, or extreme. Yeah, like a week. Like, like if you have the time. If you have a lot of time, I guess, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then there's like stream, you know, like you have to see this type of thing. So for me, I really enjoyed it. I don't think it's the greatest show, but I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was wrapped up really well. I'm fine with a one and done. I would like to see Echo again to see her, her character grow, but I, she doesn't need a second season. I love, I like the idea of Marvel doing this. We only need one season. These are like just links in a chain of a bigger story and they're going to lead to like these events. I love that idea and I hope they do that. Like I wouldn't, I would love to see her in Daredevil. Not a lot of Daredevil, but in there would be cool, you know? Yeah. So she doesn't have to be a main character. We don't need a second season. This was so well done for me, especially because it was so emotional. It was so emotionally powerful for me, especially as it continued on. Like I said, I've watched it multiple times. So I absolutely have to give it like a must see, a must stream, must view because it's it's totally worth it for me. Despite the fact that, yeah, it's not the greatest thing ever, but it's still definitely worth that. It was all right, but I just can't really rationalize like a must stream or a stream. I, I give it like a week stream. Like it's not bad, but it's not like the best thing I've watched either. It's just kind of, it's all right. It's not anything to brag home about most of the series. I just think they had a lot of good ideas. They just didn't really get them applied the best way. Right, and and that's what I'm giving them points for their ingenuity, for their bravery. Cause dude, like to have all of that in one thing, that's a lot, right? Amputee, deaf with the sign language, uh, Native American Choctaw, you know, and, and these power, you're giving her powers now, which yeah, that's, they just added that in the comics somewhat recently and stuff. You're incorporating all these things. It is a lot. So I give them a lot of credit for their effort. And like I said, to me, that stuff meant a lot to me. It did a lot for me in here. So so that's that's why I, I give it that grade. So if, if you're similar to me, I think it'll be there for you. The average person probably is going to be in a similar area as you. Some parts I was kind of checking the watch on the, on it because it, it really needed to improve on the pacing. You got to have good pacing or it just doesn't flow. Right, and it got better as it went on. 